Boom, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> and today's guest, we've got runner up. 2013 in the X Factor, Nicholas McDonald. First yes. Nicholas, mate, pleasure for coming on, brother. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Thanks for having me. How you been? Good, busy, working. Um, life's been good. It's been treating me well. But yeah, it's been good. And thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, definitely, mate. You're a big name in the old Scottish <laughs> industry, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, mate. You're, you're running up with X Factor. That's massive. It is. You know, I done that show when I was I was 16, but I turned 17 on the show, hmm. and um. It was such a crazy, crazy, crazy experience for me. People always say to me, oh, would you ever do it again? Or what would you recommend being on the show? And for me personally, I say to a lot of people, when I done it, I was, I was 16, 17. I was away from the house. I was away from school. I had no bills, nothing to worry about. Living in this house in London. The house we were actually living in was Lionel Richie's house. That was his house that, mm. that, that he had. And um, I was living there and... It, it was it was amazing. I done it at such a right age because I didn't think about it too much. Like in my head, mm -hmm. I just went with it. And see now, I think because I'm what, nearly twenty two, I'd think about it too much, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, "This is too much for me. Too much pressure and stress." Aye. Do you know what I can't I mean? believe you're only twenty two. You seem as if you've been about for years. I know it feels like that, right? But right. people always say, "Oh, you've never changed a bit." I probably put on a bit of weight, but that's all right. <laughs> Just the best days, mate. Don't worry about discovered that. Nando's and kebabs. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But that's it. <laughs> is uh, when you you must have what was the age limit then? Because it was sixteen. So the reason I signed up for the show is because they actually dropped the age limit back down to sixteen, and I mm -hmm. thought, all right, let's go for it. But no many people know. But what actually happened was, I was sitting in one night and I put in an application for The Voice and for The X Factor and cut a long story short, basically The Voice got back to me first and I was like, right, I'm going to go for The Voice because I never heard anything from X Factor. Two weeks before The Voice edition, X Factor got back to me and I thought, right, I've always been a fan of it. You know what it's like, you sit with a Chinese on a Saturday night mm -hmm. in your living room and everybody watches it and I was like, right, we'll go for X Factor, then went for X Factor and then, I don't know, it was just mental, do you know? I never ever thought that, I never went there with the mentality of, eh, Oh, I'm gonna do well on this show. I just went and signed up for it, just your normal Joe blogs. And um, we done, I done loads of editions. Like they don't even see on the telly that are like producer editions mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, waited outside the STV with Dermot and all that, waving hands and jumping about mm -hmm. and celebrating. It was freezing cold. Um, and then the rest of it just kind of I don't know. Right for it was it was mad. How is the process then? How is the process face start to finish? Do you send them videos first, and then you need to do more editions? Um, so I you kind of send them videos. You send send like a bio and whatever. And um, I actually did three editions that are not shown on TV. So the three editions were actually filmed in the uh, well taking part in the Crown Plaza at the Hydro. I went there and was sitting in the SACC, the old the old building. Mm -hmm. And it was jam packed of people. There was about ten thousand people there. So I went there and it was in like a wee tiny booth, probably not even small big on this table. And there was two people just sitting in chairs and you just sung a cappella to them. And if they thought you were good enough, they gear slip of paper and tell you to come back the next day. So that was fine. I was come back the next day, get through. And then after that they took you into a room. You sung for four people in a room, they're sitting behind a table, and then they gave you enough you do well enough, they give you a slip again to come back the next day. And I thought, cause I thought it was you just turn up and you that sit you in front of the judges. Mm -hmm. That's the way they make it. Out they make to it be. on the telly. That's the way they edit it. So then the next day I went and um, I was went out at the Crown Plaza and I was sitting in front of two people and a guy behind a camera filming me and asked a wee bit of information whatever I sung and they says to me, um, "We'll let you know if you're through in the next eight weeks or so and I was like right okay so you don't get a supper paper so you just go back to doing whatever you're doing so I waited and it was about I don't know 10 or 11 weeks past and I was like never heard then and I was like take it I never get through and then one day I get a phone call saying congratulations you're through the judges and I'm like ah brilliant no way can I believe it That's it was mad it was mad it was crazy who was your mentor Louis Wall uh, hi Louis. Louis he's brilliant but I know Louis's great do you know a lot of people's like ah, oh you'd Louis you'd Louis but you know, he loved you didn't he he did he did Gay Louis Jude, you know. How was he to work for? He was great to work with, do you know what I mean? He actually, he really, really believed in me. He really, really did. And for something like a show like that, I feel like that's, yeah, that's what you need. You, you, he was my mentor, but he mm. needed to be my mentor, do you know what I mean? 
do you think th- that is behind their team as they say that like, he was really behind you weren't he ah he was he really really was who was other mentors there um, Gary Barlow Gary Barlow Nicole Scherzinger she loved Jan Albert didn't she aye she's, she's a oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason she I would go to that show that. mate that's the only reason she's I signed up <laughs> <laughs> she is smoking man by the way she's so it was um, Sean Osborne Gary Barlow Louis and obviously Nicole mm-hmm. Um, but Louis was great and, and actually after the show he wanted to manage me and he said to me went look I'll manage you and blah 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 and I I don't know I just I just didn't I, didn't, I wasn't feeling it do you know mm-hmm. I was just new into this industry Louis Walsh is one of the biggest managers in the world do you know what I mean his best mates he's Simon Kill's right hand man he'll mm-hmm. have all the contacts you'll ever need and take you to places that you need to go and for me I don't know. I just felt that it, it just didn't feel right, do you know, that way. And I was just like, thanks for the offer, but but no thanks, do you know. And it's not a thing I look back now and regret. It's a thing I look back and go, do you know what, that's life and you learn for, not even, it's not even a mistake, you just learn for, from experience, do you know what I mean? That, that would uh, know see, right when you thing. were doing it, did everybody want a PC about Everybody tried to they be did. your pal, everybody. How, how did you know who to trust? See, you didn't. Hmm. You didn't. There was... Um, there were so, there's just crazy things with that. Because I was so young, do you know what I mean? I was so young, um, so naive. My mum and my family didn't really know anything about the industry, do you know what I mean? And how cutthroat it is and how bad it really, really is. Um, we, we, I've had one manager since I came off the show, and it was a woman who I never really met. And at the time, she had, um, What's Cheryl Cole? What band was she in again? Oh, Girls yeah, Allowed. Girls Allowed. She had Girls Allowed and she had loads of these big acts and whatever. And um, she was... She just took... I just paid her money for, for absolutely no reason. Mm-hmm. And she was just cutting gigs and doing this and doing that. And stupidly, when I come off the show, I probably, probably shouldn't even mention this, but I don't care, um, is that... We, she says to us that we need to pay her a fee up front for her work, and I was like, I just thought that was a standard procedure. Um, so she actually got handed fifteen thousand pound before she even kicked a ball, and the woman never even made me that money back. She knocked back, I think she knocked back ads for Iron Brew. She knocked back loads of different things, even her as on Next Factor tour. She was taking commission off of that. She was taking commission off a the record deal and all that that I had and she was just taking all this money and I'm like this woman's not doing anything do you know what I mean and if it wasn't for my lawyer who's amazing I w- I'd probably still be stuck in at the day do you know what I mean and th- that's not even that's not even a small part of how bad it is do you know what I mean did you just sign that contract then and, and just be naive and just to go with it and, and believe in her and trust her because <clears> you had these bands behind her I had all the frills and bows and all it was legit she, like she is legit but She's obviously mm-hmm. wearing a ski mask when I'm not there, do you know what I mean? But that's what they are, because it's funny, because we're tra- we distributing your documentary, and, and that's the, there's always small print that on things there about is. the day, and taking a percentage mm-hmm. and trying to get things right, and we, I ain't got a clue about that, I ain't got a clue. Same, do you know what I mean? And, and that's what I was saying, it, it, my mum, she, she's she been the saving grace, do you know what I mean? She, if it wasn't for her, like, reading over things and whatever and you just hear it all the time with all these young acts up and coming and signing like record deals and ah, it looks great and the sheet of paper mm-hmm. but in the small print you've signed that for 10 years and that's it is do you that know what you I mean and you're, 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 attached st- to that? you're, you're stuck to him for 10 mm-hmm. years and you might not even do nothing you, they'll put you up on a shelf and that's it and, you, and you're left there to do whatever you want it's up. terrible but so do you think it's a lot of who you know in the industry as well it definitely is it's who you know and you know yourself it's word of mouth, do you know what I mean? We've been to loads of events together, we do loads of stuff together. People know good people, do you know what I mean? And that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. Like, I, he's a good guy, oh, watch it with him, mm-hmm. watch her, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's all to do with that. But the thing in Glasgow and like Wishaw in Scotland, it is a very small industry, there's not really much happening here, is there? It is, do you know? And see, like, this, this, there's not really much happening, do you know? But um, there's not really many people want to help each other out, Aye. do you know what I mean, like, mm-hmm. I'll say to you, you scratch my back, I'll uh-huh. scratch yours, you, if you have me for an event, then I'll mm-hmm. sort you, or I'll mm-hmm. help you with this, do you know, and I'm always one forgiven, uh-huh. do you know what I mean, and, and 
my mum's like, you, you always give, mm-hmm. give, give, but you're not always receive, son, and you need to learn that. And it's sad that I've learned that from the age before I was even 17. Folk I'm, at 17 are just leaving school or I know. just starting college, you know what I mean? They're no... What I went through in my life in the last five, six years is what folk would go through in six mm-hmm. year. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not saying it, it's been a roller coaster. It's been up and downs and up and downs all the time. But that can only propel you for the future. It it's does. Deadly, certainly. It it's does. I've been only 21, and it's sad because there's success out there for everybody. There is success out there, there for is. everybody, but people want it all for themselves. Yeah, there's cut they They're going to know what you're doing and know what you're doing and do bad things because they want to progress their career. But realistically, people see right through it. Mm-hmm. People go, "She's a wrong and he's a wrong I don't want to do that. And then what happens is they've not got that backbone. To do something themselves, mm-hmm. which is scary. Mm-hmm. When you were on the show, when did you realise I can win this year or not? Um, I don't know. Because you had some amount of support, you did have you some know amount what? of support. Honest to God, see the people in Scotland, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Even when I still meet people in the street, and even still, people say to me, You're brilliant. We vote. Like, I get it nearly every single day. Mm-hmm. We voted for you, and I'm like, that's why I love going to these events and doing like different things and mm. meeting people that genuinely picked yeah. up the phone mm. every single week and voted and their phone and their mother-in-law and their phone and their auntie and their niece saying, you better vote for him and I'll pay the phone bill next month. I've heard all the stories. Mm-hmm. There was one person that actually voted 400 times <laughs> and I get a screenshot of it while I was on the show. I'm like, your bill's got to be about three grand. <laughs> that so is about 150 a pop I, I was like, you're dabbing minted. <laughs> Absolutely minted. When you obviously when you were doing the show, then who won it? Sam, Sam Bailey. Sam Bailey won and it. And she has some voice. To be fair, she did have some voice. People say to me, "Oh, you get robbed that show." Sam Bailey is an incredible singer. Mm-hmm. She she's incredible. Even I listen to her like singing. I get I get shivers up my arm. Mm-hmm. That's when you know you're listening to a really 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 mm-hmm. good singer. She's she's incredible. Do you know? But see now the funny thing is is see now I'm I don't want to sound big headed, but. I think myself, and I know myself, that I'm a much better singer now mm-hmm. than what I was then. But you're only 16. I know, yeah. I was only 16, 17, and obviously your voice matures and you grow up mm-hmm. and you just grow up, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? But I think now my voice is so much better now. And that's the thing I wish, that I wish my voice, when I went there at 17, I wish my voice was as good as it is now, mm-hmm. because I would have given a good run for that money. How can you, you, you the godfather to Sam Bailey's wing, is that correct? Yes. Am I right information? Do you know now? who the godmother is? No. You're gonna die. Yeah. Sharon Osborne. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's Shazza. Aye. That's unbelievable. Her noisy. Does that not make you feel, it was Ozzy at the, the... No, they weren't at the Christian, uh, no. Because they're always falling out, aren't they? Aye, they're always falling <laughs> out. Do you think that's mental, but do you ever wake up and go, am I dreaming sometimes to have the names it's and mad, mad Shazza? Do you used to it? I don't know, I just kind of just take it my stride and don't think about it. Because it is mad, I think it? if, if touch wood, right, but if anything happened to Sam, then I'm just speaking for an Auntie Shazza. I'm going, you need to take away. in. You need to take away. in. That's unbelievable. It's, it's mad. Isn't it? It's crazy. But I think it's brilliant and I love to show people support and for what you're doing and Aye. it takes it takes courage and all. Was there any times you felt any stress or anxiety or did it get too much for um, you or the attention so young? Do you know, it did a wee bit, I, do you know, when... The time, I'll go back to the question, because you asked, when did I think I could do well? I got down to the judges' houses, right? And there were six boys there, and well, Louis was a mentor, and I thought, we, we, they flew us to Gatwick Airport, and it's a big reveal with a golden envelope, where'd he mm-hmm. gone? I was like, ah, this, this Louis boy's going to take us to Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've packed my shorts and t-shirt, uh-huh. my vest again, I'm ready to go on my holidays. <laughs> I was like, he's going to take us to Ireland. Uh, and a Snyder, isn't it, you think? And then, and then I thought, oh God, so I've got the envelope and I'm, I think I stand at the back, I was like, I know I've gone anyway. I think I was already heading for the terminal to, be, <laughs> to Dublin or Belfast or something. <laughs> Opened it up and it took us to Saint-Tropez in France, I'm like, I've never heard it, but it sounds mint it, let's go. <laughs> we went there um, and honestly, see for me, it was a part of the show where I was like, if I don't get any further here, I'll never do it again. Because there's so much stress, so much goes on behind the scenes that, like, that people don't even know about. Like, they're digging for information. Like, I think people ask me, is the show like rigged? Mm-hmm. But I think they know who, who they want to do well. They want to put yeah, through. A, 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 like, they need to have a set program. Of, like, this is what we need this year. It's a business, isn't it? It's a business, aye. So they were phoning me up and asking me, like, they did a research or researching into my background asking 
Has mum and dad ever been involved with the police? Has Manny's uncle ever been involved with the police? Asking me questions like, uh, how many people live in my house? Where does my brothers work as? Do you share a bed with your brothers? Mm-hmm. Like, all these questions are like, what? That's totally irrelevant. But now it makes sense because I don't know if they knew I was going to do well in the live shows, but I got to the live shows and obviously it's like, bam, right, this is the finalist of the X Factor, let's find out information. You know what it's like? Folk go on it and then go on the X Factor and then they're in it a week and then the headlines are, mm-hmm. their dad's in jail Aye, for, so for, for whatever mm-hmm. and they get chucked out or they've had a drug addiction mm-hmm. or, do you know what I mean? They're, and this is the papers just digging. Mm-hmm. Or people just phone up and go, oh, I have this on the X Factor. Uh, he get lifted Aye. two years ago for fighting or something like that. So that they need to find out absolutely everything and make sure that you've kind of got like a clean slate so nothing crops up later on in the show. So I got to the judges' house season of six boys, and I, and I was like, you're filming. See, like, the clip, they, they go, so Nicholas, how do you feel being at the judges' houses? And they have the, like, the interview thing before you go on and sing. They filmed that for about four hours, and they cut it down to, like, 20 seconds, and you're, you're watching it back going, you can none. Mm-hmm. So I got to the judges' house season, and I was just like, if I don't, as I said to myself, I if I don't go through here, I'll never do it again. I thought, it's just too much pressure. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's just too much. And I get through and I just burst out crying. But a lot of people don't know is when I was nine years old or ten, I take a cardiac arrest playing football and died on the pitch. And nobody knows about that. Um, and then I was later diagnosed with a heart condition called long QT syndrome. So basically my heart beats too fast and I need to take a tablet to slow it down every day. So anything like anger, hurt, anxiety, sudden alarm, pressure, stress, anything physical exercise, anything like that can trigger it. Um, so when this happened to me for two years of my life, I basically done nothing. I remember my pals were having parties and the mum could go, mum turned around and went, I and Nicholas can come to such and such as um, football party, but Nicholas can't stay overnight and mum would be like, how? And they went, oh, just cause he's hurt and all the parents started to back off. I remember when I was sitting doing PE, I'd sit my PE kit on and I'd sit on the bench and watch everybody do it because everyone was so scared in case anything happened again. And um, that was a re- that was a, a, that was a big turning point for my life, mm. you know, because this was a really, really serious condition that I've got for the rest of my life and will never, ever, ever be cured. So um, I got to that point in the show and I get put through to the live shows and Louis Walsh and Shane Filing for Westlife took me aside totally off camera and Louis says to me the producers obviously know about your heart condition and stuff and they didn't want to put you through to that live shows and I says how's that they went because they're just scared in case it like so much pressure and stress mm-hmm. like will you be able to handle it and I just looked at him dead in the eye and I went I'll do this I'll, see, I'll do this for you mm-hmm. I says you need to believe in me that I'll do this I says I'm fine like, no, I'm not fine. I look fine, but my heart's obviously a bit dodgy, you know. But he believed, and that's what I mean, going back to what we spoke about earlier, like, he believed in me for that moment, and he was bawling his eyes out crying. He went, I've done this show for 10 years, and I've never had... Shane Filan's done it every year with him. He had Sunita and he had Nicole Appleton. He says, I've, in the 10 years that I've done it, I've never had four judges sitting at a judge's house, he's asking an addition, bawling their eyes out, crying, he, you, he, he, you're singing. He says, I could not say no to you. I couldn't. He says, I went, the producers, you've got the judges, and then you've got the producers of the show. The producers of the show run it. That's it. They're the gaffers. They tell they tell the judges what to say, what to do, blah, 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 all this. They have the final say. Louis went above and beyond him and says, he's gone through and that is it. He says, I, c- I could not physically send you home. He says, I couldn't. He says, I couldn't do it. Was that because, was that the producers that didn't want <clears> you there? The producers didn't, didn't want me get on the show because they didn't think I'd handle the pressure. Because of my heart. Health and safety. It, eye health and safety. But and you know, how would that have affected your confidence, your anxiety, everything? You'd have probably, um, like you said, you said you wouldn't have went back to singing because you're thinking, right, I'm not good enough. Aye, aye. It's, it's all self-belief. And about, honestly, about, Two months before I actually went in for the X Factor edition, I said to my mum, I was gigging every weekend and I was like, that's what I was saying, I was like 16 and all my pals were going out at that point and discovering house parties and all that, know what I mean? And then um, I was gigging every weekend and I was going to school, obviously Monday to Friday and I was gigging Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
and it got to a point about two months and I'm on the 4X Factor, I went, I'm not doing this anymore. I said, I, I'm not getting a life. Like, I feel like I'm going to school and working. I feel mm. like I'm in a full-time job here. And I wasn't enjoying it and I'm in pubs and clubs and singing f- like four hour sets for like £150, which at that time, getting £150 at the age of 16, you're up, you're, you're mint it. Do you know what I mean? You can go to the ice cream van, buy cones and go to the shop and buy your pal sweeties and you're like, like that's mm-hmm. fine. Um, but I was going to chuck it and I thought, have a last bash at it, go for this X Factor and then got to judge his house. He's that sort of saying, I get through and lose. Like, I couldn't have said no, I needed to put you through. Mm-hmm. And then got to live shows and I don't know, it was just mental. It was absolutely yeah, mental. Because yeah, you did, I watched it that year. You, you <clears> did get stronger week to week to week. It did, you did die. massive support. Did you think, but so uh, first of all, mate, for the heart thing, mate, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing for what you've done. I don't think that was that mentioned on the show. No. See, what the thing is about the show is they knew about it. Everyone knew about it. They wanted to use that as a sob story. And I says to, I, I says to them, I says, got Louis, I says, Louis, I want to speak to the producers. He's looking at me, he's like, mate, you're 16, what are you talking about? He's like, right, okay, I'll have a meeting with him. So, after the, I get, after the judges' house, they flew me to London and then they took me to a specialist. And then um, he checked on my heart, gave me an ECG and whatever. He asked what I had, he knew what it was, he was like, like, it's a really serious condition, it's not to be taken lightly, but it'll be absolutely fine in the show. Um. And after that, I just said to Leo, like, I want a meeting with the producers and whatever um, to talk about stuff. And I sat them down and I says to them, my heart's fine. Went to the specialist, he says I'm fine. Take my tablet, that's it. I, the reality is I could drop dead in a second taking this interview. Uh, anybody <laughs> can, but... But anybody, anybody can, can, but just with, die. But just with my heart, like... Anything. like I remember when I first had it, my mates couldn't even walk up to me and go boo because I'd be like that. <laughs> Mum would be like, oh, no, he's going to die, don't do it. So Halloween, I just used to sit up my room. <laughs> but now, now I'm the one going about scaring, scaring everybody in the house. When did you find out about your heart? So it was when when I when I dropped dead. I never knew anything about it. Oh, did you know? No. I was playing my local football team, Wisha Wickham. And um, honest, teams were set up. I was a striker, but I was a poacher. I was a goal scorer, you know. <laughs> and I went like that, kicked the ball at that to pass it, to start the game off and just drop. My mum and dad thought I'd get shot. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. And, and the, apparently they were all screaming and shouting and this and that and I'm just lying there. Dying? Uh, I'm, I'm away, I'm gone. And when I fell back, when you take the cardiac crest, I fell back and when I fell back, I don't know how, but I've swallowed my tongue. I can't do it now, right? Oh, and that's, that's stopped my airway, so I'm out and the coach of the football team like usually if somebody's tongue goes back, you just tilt their head and the tilt the tongue slid, like slides forward. Mings wasn't doing that for some reason. I'm not a lizard or something, so I don't know what yeah, was that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, <you're sure laughs> <was a> <laughs> but um I was like I was I don't know folk go to see the golden gates. I went, no, I just hot the ground and just <laughs> remember waking up in a buggy covering blood. Louis so Walsh, sorry all you. Uh, Aye. <laughs> You're through to lie shows, Nicholas. <laughs> Is that, Louis? Is that you? <laughs> so um I I was out and the coach had to punch my two front teeth out and pull my tongue forward and bring me back to life and no way. that was it. So I've had to meet my producers. I mean, look, you obviously know about the heart condition. I want to get through in my own merit and my own voice. I said I don't want to this to become the Nicholas McDonald sob story, the wee boy for for Motherwell, and he's got the dodgy ticker. He's got the, do- <laughs> the dodgy ticker. Get the dodgy ticker and- <laughs> Cause you hear it all the time, mm-hmm. and I genuinely wanted to get through, and people going, "I like him, and I like mm-hmm. his voice," and that's how I said to you even before this interview started. No many people know about it, you know, and it's a kind of thing that I can speak about now and raise awareness for, and use my platform right. that I've got in my social media to be like look this, this is what I've got and speak to other people about it and see now like I'm an ambassador for like mm-hmm. two or three charities just to do with the heart condition because every time I see you it's at charity events you do a charity, lot of charity aye, work, aye, aye. but for the, the heart thing it shows people that you're noted you can still achieve mm-hmm. things in life you still can at the end you want definitely but you're not, you've not let it defeat you that that was like that, see now that's like my purpose now oh, when on the show I was like I don't want to speak about it because I want to get through my own merit and see now that I'd like, I've got my own platform. I can say, like, I, Glasgow Children's Hospital Charity, for example, I'm an ambassador for them, and I can go in there and I can talk to the young ones and being like, look, this is my story. Look, I, you're in hospital right now, and it, it, 
it sucks, but it'll get better. Trust me, look, this is what happened to me and, and look, look at me now. Like, no matter where you are in your life, no, and you can achieve it, you want to achieve, do you know what I mean? You don't, you don't, don't need loads of money, you don't need loads of help, do you know what I mean? Look at all these singers and actors that come from absolutely hee-haw to being some of the, the biggest success, biggest success in the world, in the world, in the world do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you need to start from somewhere and mm-hmm. no matter your condition, your race, or absolutely it, like anything, just anything in life, like you can you can achieve it, and and that's what I like to do now is like a young, like let's like say young guy, a role model. Do you know what I mean? Is be a role model mm-hmm. for these for these younger mm-hmm. kids and being like, look, if I can do it, and I never even believed in myself mm-hmm. to be honest. I was like, if I can do it, anybody in this room can do it, and it's possible to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like I like to say to them, look, it's possible to do it. I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but no, look at. Look, ha- look at my life mm-hmm. now, do you know what I mean? You and and use it. that as a platform. And, and, and a lot it. of these people going on these shows are <clears> on. <throat> no disrespect to them, but they gaff the rails. You've Aye. never had any bad stories. You've never been at a piss up with fucking kebab running down your face, hanging against a <laughs> wall. You see a lot of these Aye, people yeah, think they've made it do just they? because you're on that show. You're lucky. There's only a handful of people that are still active. It's true. Do you it's know what true. I mean? It's very, very, very true. Like People say, oh, where have you been? With? Like, I'm working. People forget that seeing you're on the X Factor, 11 million people are watching you. They watched me for nearly a whole year. The edition of the show started in like summertime or whatever, and then it finished. So they were watching me for like nearly three solid months. They were watching me the full month of November through to December, watching me on this live show. So they're watching you every weekend. They're mm-hmm. tuning in, they're seeing you there. You're on the paper, you're in the biggest papers, you're in the biggest magazine, you're the biggest interviews. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then seeing you come off that show, you don't get any help whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Mentally, not. I, s- I swear to God, right? I came out that, that final on the 18th of December 2014. No, 2013, that's a lie. I came out the show, December 2013. Come out the live show, walked, Wembley Stadium was here and the Hilton Hotel's there. I walked across to the Hilton Hotel, big huge after party and all that after it. I don't know what I, I don't know what I got yet. I wanted to go and see my family sitting there, mm-hmm. a holiday inn, Enjoy up the road. So I went up and see my family and the, the one of the people up at the show says to me, right, you're checked out of here tomorrow morning, that was Monday morning. I'm like, alright, that's fine. And I just assumed they had my flights and all that booked home. So I went down in the Monday morning with my suitcase, he's just came running up in the show. My phone is graph is mm-hmm. nut. I'm just sitting in a room, just what I sit in a room. There's a party going on down the stair, but I just want to sit in a room. Drained what all? I drained and just been like, mm-hmm. just been like, <sighs> no, what? Do you know what I mean? Because it, I say no, what? Because you don't know what's prepared, what's what's Aye. next. So I went and see my family, whatever, and checked out on the Monday, and I says to them, well, what's happening with my flight home? And he says, what do you mean? They never booked me a flight home. I had, to, I had to book my own flight home. Do you think you get used then? <clears throat> do you think the majority of people get used? They do. See see the way I say it, right? You're just not a lamp of the slaughter. Sounds terrible, but it's as brutal as it is. They, they, I, they care about you when you're on the show and they look after you and it's great. Don't get me wrong. But see, after it, it's not like a, a help, a help, like a, a, fo- a phone in call or mm-hmm. I'm struggling with this or whatever. Like, it's. There you go, you're into the world now, and and, and you're, you're now went from having three followers on Twitter to 300,000, and when you're, when you're on that show, they call it the X Factor bubble, so no matter where you go, I was sitting in that, that household, mm-hmm. I, I went, I remember, we were in the house two weeks before the live shows, and then um, obviously the public didn't know, but we were sitting in the house, and we were like, like this is all the people in the live shows, paparazzi's not that finding out where we're staying, they had to get, reverse a car into the back, because I wanted to go to McDonald's, right? <laughs> they reversed a car into the back of the double garages, folded down the back seats, got loads of boxes, folded them down. I went laying the back seats, and they put boxes at the top of me so they didn't know who was in the back of the motor. I had security and a driver driving me. I was com- walking into McDonald's and they were putting jackets in my head and all that. I'm like, I feel like Justin Bieber. Uh. Ah. And that's just. I, was like, I just want to go for a score nugget. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I get your money. It's some get curry sauce over. and go. <laughs> Do you see before the see when it starts and right through as well? Do you get paid? Do you get an earner? Do they, they get wages or anything? That's an story. Right, so people think you go on that show and you're instantly a millionaire. That's 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 not true. So what they do is if you've got like a mortgage and bills to pay, they give you money towards it. Don't go right, we'll pay half and you pay half. Um 
So fortunately for me, I had no bills. I was still at school. I was 17. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But w- when you're there, you've obviously got a roof over your head. Um, you've got, and you've got, there's full, full-time full chefs working in the house and cook your food and whatever. Um, but since cooking wasn't really that good, I just wanted a sausage supper out of the chip, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're cooking their hat maybe with a sad... Caviar and... I'm like, you know, they're <laughs> a domino soup up with this. <laughs> So um, when you're on that show, I'll ask you the question. So I was on that, I was just on the live, see just the live shows. I was there for 14 weeks down in London living on this live shows. How much do you think they gave me a week to live on? So your shampoo, conditioner, just your day-to-day stuff. Looking at it, you'd probably think people were getting a couple of grand a week, but for you living, you'd probably give you about 100 quid, 200 quid a week. They gave me 40 quid a week. That's fucking terrible. 40 quid a week. Is everybody on that salary? Well, no, like... Some have got wains. So, so adults, yeah. so like Sam Bailey, I, I don't know what she was on, but obviously she was an adult, had wains and a mortgage, she'd a wee bit more. But they gave me 40 quid a week. See, so if you want to phone a, like, say you phone a pizza, you're 20 quid. Yeah, at least. Like, and I'm leaving myself. So, do you know what I mean? So, so, so you don't... own 40 quid a week? Mm-hmm. And that's you on a show that's getting a loving... That's on a show that's, that's writing in, I don't know, four million and just votes. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Do you know what I mean? Well, Each I week. Know do you know, so you don't get a percentage of people voting for you? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Even our songs that we sung that week went on the iTunes and they made all the money off of that. And uh, and, and at that time, we were actually um, we were in fights with Strictly because Strictly we were getting more views than Strictly and Strictly was like huge at that point. Um, so the ratings were like really, really, really high. So say. Like, if somebody liked that, my song I sung that week, they'd put it on iTunes and they would get us to promote it. And we wouldn't get as much as... At that time, I'm saying that time, what I'm talking, it's 10 years ago, but it was like £1 to, to, buy the, to buy it. It wasn't, you didn't have like Apple accounts and all that. No, you pay £10 a month, you get whatever you want. So they were making all the money off of that, all the money off the votes. All, like, they were making all the money. Mm-hmm. And we're the ones doing all the so work. it's just a business you're getting used, on it? You're getting Basically, trained. aye. And it's sad... But what about like the Christmas songs that comes out? What about because your album, your first album as well, it came out. Was it number aye. six? I number six in the top. UK chart and the top UK aye, charts. Aye, aye. Um, and then what happened with that is when I came off the show. So what basically happened when I came off the show? Basically, Sam Bailey won it right, and you get they make it out that you get a million pound put in your bank account. Mm-hmm. But that isn't the case. What is the case is is. If you won the show, you get a million pound contract with um Sony, whatever. Aye. aye. We're well, basically Simon Kill, mm-hmm. right? And that contract is what they do is they invest a million pound into you, into your music, and a studio PR time. Work, promotion, P- aye. Aye. They just would basically spend a million pound on you doing for your first album or whatever. So they don't physically give you that money. So what I basically when I come off the show in my eyes, I basically get the same deal as Sam Bailey, but I never won it. So for me, I got to that point in the show, I was like, I knew she was, I knew for like a few weeks into live shows she was going to win it. I knew that. But for me, it was just being like, I'm here and this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is incredible, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, an, I'm, I'm on the X Factor, like, I've watched this since I was like 10, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? I, I've watched... That's what I said, sit with Chinese with my family and watched it going, oh, they're brilliant. And remember Leon and Lewis and all these big, big names that, you, that even now you're, you're still hearing, they're still doing what they're doing. I'd love to do it, love to do that. So for me, it was never ever about winning it, but it was more about just being just to be, there. be there and enjoying the experience and being and taking it all in. Do you know what I mean? Did then it ever dishearten you though when you were going through it all and you started seeing all the rats and all the right? I'm getting used. I'm just another pawn in their game. Did it ever just go right? What's the point in this? Um, aye, there is. You know, there's times it's like <clears throat> you're just like, like some of the things that's happened. Like we ate. What, what, like I remember I was on an agent's book and they had at that point had One Direction and all that, and I'm like, this is mad. This is no way. They've got One Direction, they've got Nicky McDonald from all the their books, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, 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 and then, at the time you come off the show, they're, they're booking, booking you gigs and, and but behind your back, they're, they're taking more money off. They're making more money than you that's doing the work. All they're doing is sitting behind the phone going, and folk a phone name, I Nicholas is free, that's great. 
right, we'll pencil it in for that for that date and we'll speak to him. They'll phone me, Nicholas. That date, the twentieth of December, are you free? Aye, that's fine. Right, I'll book it in, it's for whatever it is. And then they write it down, they phone back the client and go, Right, Nicholas is free that date, this is a fee, blah 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 and it, the job's a good day within an hour. Because it's all glitz and glam. Everybody it thinks it's great, I'm going to do this, and they set their whole heart on it. That mm-hmm. That's why people fail, I know, because when they get there, they realise, is this it? And they realise it's not as spectacular as the first one. it could be. Aye. That's why it's, you've got to find balance in life, because mm-hmm. 99% of the people on the show, have, they've went to by the wayside, because they think, as soon as they're on that, the, the live they've shows, made whatever, it. they've made it. You've no. You've no, exactly, and it, you've got to keep working. Keep do you know, the, the, the hard work starts after the show. Do you know what I mean? It really, really does. It, it's, it gets to the point where... Like I say, you don't get any support. I they they recommend lawyers to you, they recommend managers and agents, but they're all in their B group, they're all looking after each other. They're they're not looking out for you, they're all just wanting to make the money. It's aye, all money. Aye. They wouldn't care if you dropped down deed on that stage. Oh, they would have promoted them, they'd they have would, promoted they'd, they'd that made a fortune. Show, yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they would have promoted that on their <laughs> show, <laughs> made a song about it on the X Factor <laughs> singing about Big Blue if we wish you a deed and write a wee song and the wet is straight number one. I would have been song high five and <laughs> get them on high five out of the Great job. For that, when you hear that, it kinda disheartened kind of disheartens you as well because when you see all that they promote it as if they're for everybody mm-hmm. they'll help you they, ca- they care about your well-being mm-hmm. but clearly they, clearly they don't listen as a business they and don't. there will be good people there did you ever meet Simon Kill? Uh, I met him once or twice when he came down and visited the live shows um, and it was really really quiet because at that time I think his wife was pregnant but he didn't really tell anybody Oh, so so he was quiet, he was nice, he was really, really nice. Um but the only judge I didn't get along with was Gary Barlow. He for some reason dis didn't like me whatsoever. Because they don't used to always try and get wee digs at you? He did mm-hmm. all the time. And I don't know why. I was like, I've not done anything to you, do you know what I mean? Like it was just I don't know. Just... He's a boring bastard anyway. Yeah, let's face it. Uh, yeah. He's a boring it was bastard. Just, it was just it was just being hard work and and I felt it saying to him like I would sing one week and it'd be good and he would pick me stupid that suit like oh I didn't I didn't like the the stage and I'm going well I didn't pick to be the stage I just want to come here and sing. I remember the first week on the on the live shows it was eighties week. I wasn't even born in the 80s. <laughs> and these Muppets have got me singing 80s songs. Got I remember. Singing. Well, the funny story is, in the interview, I thought the band was called Spandex Belly. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I said it was Spandex Belly. Right? So I'm going, I'm walking in and I'm going to interview. I am Nicholas McDonald. And this week I'm, sang, I'm singing Spandex Belly. <laughs> and then my mum watched it. She's like, what you talking about? That's, that's, what, that's what women wear. Do you know what I mean? They bring their belly in. <laughs> no way. So I was a, I was a front it. You know, uh-huh. I'm not even, I wasn't even born in the 80s. Uh-huh. I'm lying to the public going, oh, I know this song. Mm-hmm. and I know the song, I've heard it, but I'm like, no, I wasn't born in the 80s. But it's sad because he should know better we take that. And But I think he'd done the kind yes. of same with Robbie Williams. Yes. I kind of bullied that's him. I, go I, don't know, I don't really know if they bullied him, but that's the way Robbie Williams pursues He was 16, 17 and he kind of yep. kicked him out. I don't know yep. if it was jealousy or anything. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was with him. But no, I was going to go into that and that's what I was saying. Like, I wanted to... Sh- one time, just I never done it, but take him aside and say to him, say to him, look, you you've done all this addition at this age. You know what it's like. What like why are you being so pernickety mm-hmm. when things? I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm only seventeen. Mm-hmm. Feel sorry for me. I'm like, this is hard. Do you know what I mean? And, and you being the way you are, it's no really. Uh-huh. You're not really helping the situation. Do you know what I mean? Like every week it was negative, negative, and then one week it will Nicholas. You know, I, I've seen such a. Such a change in you this week, and and yeah, good mm-hmm. job. <laughs> I'm like, is is that it? You know, mm-hmm. say something. Like, I no. don't know. It was just a wee, it was but it wasn't just... a, a positive criticism. It no. was like wee sharp digs. It was. Uh, it was digs. Mm-hmm. It was mere digs. It was like I would say something positive, but then it'd have a wee dig about something negative. You know, and I was just like, whatever. And see now, like when I do like ladies' lunches, whatever they go, oh, Gary Ballo, Gary Ballo, and I tell them after all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The tickets I'm selling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary boy. <laughs> Are you in contact with anybody still? Um, anybody that was in the show? Any? Uh, I actually speak to Sam. Obviously, Sam Bailey now and again, mm. and I speak to like friend. But either than that, everybody just does their own thing. I'm mm. up in Scotland. Do you know what I mean? I was going to move to London a few years ago, and I thought, Nah, screw that. 
When did you start singing? Uh, I started singing when I was about... I don't know what mum says, I could always sing when I was really, really young. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Always singing. My karaoke go-to song was Robbie Williams' Angels. It's a classic. Would you have loved it? That's a belter. Would you love him to be your mentor? Aye. Good aye, guy, isn't he? He's a good laugh. Because you can tell he's one of the boys. You can tell he's, he's been through a lot honest, of shit. He's just honest, you know what I mean? He's just he would care for honest you. and upfront. And, and he's like, he, I think he's great for the show because mm-hmm. he's like somebody that will look after their mentor and make mm-hmm. sure they get the best of what, 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 the best of their experiences, such, do you know what I mean? But um, I he he was really nice, and I've actually met him a few times. Um, he's invited me to gigs and all that, and went and seen him at the Hydro. I think I've seen him in Hamden, and mm. he's just one of these guys. And I met him like four years ago through his drummer, and he's like one of these guys. I keep in touch, and like, all right, whatever. And he take me a pinch of salt, and they do. Mm. Don't know these people like if I see they're playing in Hamden, I drop my text or whatever, or, and be like, oh, is there any tickets or anything? And be like, aye, aye, come along. And I remember I took my mum to one of these gigs in the Hydro and she met Robbie's dad and all that. And we never actually got to meet him because he was in getting a massage like before the mm-hmm. before his gig. That must be hard. Sorry, that. For a fucking tough life summit, innit? I know. And um couldn't couldn't see him but backstage and whatever and all his family and it was all brand new. And these are people that like Bobby Williams, like he's went through he's went to hell and back. Oh, aye, with the drugs do you know what I mean? And just with everything and now He's back on his feet, and, and I think he's great for the show because young people coming through, he'll be he'll take them under his wing and be like, he, he, he'll relate to it so much, and that's how I think he's great for the show. On the other hand, I don't know why his wife's on it. Why is she on it? Because she's good Cause looking. Because it's his wife. Because it's his wife. I like, n- no criticising her, but I don't know, like, I don't, is she, is she an actor? Or? I don't even know what she is. I don't think she, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't know if she's from, just a model. From my experience, I don't know if she's got, a music background or whatever we, we, could, we could be sitting here wrong and she could have been a judge uh, on, a, a on or American Idol or aye, something aye. So, I've never I mean? seen her and I don't really know about <clears> her she, but she seems decent enough if she's with her she does she, 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 she seems really really nice um, but then the last last night on the X Factor one of the girls got put out and Sam went it's my show I changed, blah, the, blah, I changed the rules last night just changed the rules there and there on the telly and I'm going well that's what happens when you're the gaffer in it but that's what happens when you, you're on the show on it ah, you, you basically have your saying mm-hmm. I don't know, do whatever you want. So after the show then, obviously, for the runner-up, how's it been then for the last five years? What's been happening? It's been mental. When you know? released your album as well? Aye, so obviously we did, I've done f- three or four tours, three, um, done the album, that done well, and then what happened was, is the record label were wanting to do things that I didn't want to do, and I was like, well, I don't want to be in this, I don't want, I don't want to be with this label if... Because the album was like a covers album to start mm. with, and there was three original songs on there, and one of the guys who actually wrote one of the original songs we actually wrote Believe by Cher, so they were putting you in with the best in the business, do you know what I mean? But even at that, I wasn't happy, because I wanted it to all be original and be like, to the fans, oh look, this is all my original stuff, but same again, young, naive, they're pushing me, the multi-billion pound company, Simon Kills, behind you. Well, I'm saying Simon Kills, his record label's mm-hmm. under his name. Um, you should listen to these folk, they know what they're talking about. So, when that came out, I was I was happy, it done really, really, really well. Um, but since then, I've been working on my own music, and I left the record deal, I got my lawyer to sort that out, and I just left, because I wasn't happy, and they weren't wanting to take me in the direction of where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And now, I've been on my own, everything I do is all self-funded, so... Recording time, sh- studio time, videos, PR, everything is all done by myself and all comes out my own pocket. Now that costs a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I could have probably bought two houses with the money I've mm-hmm. spent, but the point is, is it's an investment. People go, oh, you know, release some music, and I'm, I'm, well, as you know, You're only twenty one. I know, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two on Try Friday. To try, to, uh... <laughs> try to keep me young. <laughs> but um, no, I've got obviously I've got the new single coming out on the twenty third day right. November this month. Um, and that's the first single for a few years because with all this studio time and everything, it all costs a lot, a lot, a lot of money, do you know? And I think people just think you're going to a studio and write an album within a week and it's all done. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that isn't that isn't the case, do you know? If the way I look at it, and I use examples, if you buy a hundred pound motor, you know that you're gonna get a hundred pound worth and then the next day it's gonna break down. If you buy like say a hundred grand motor, you're gonna get a hundred grand out of it. So if I go into a studio session and and say the guy's a hundred pound. You're, 
you're going to come out with 100 you only pay for what you get, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? But if you go into a studio and you're paying a thousand pounds a day, one or two tracks, and you're you're gonna get really good mm-hmm. quality stuff, and you're you're working with, with really good people, do you know? So all that all costs money, and but I've been everywhere. I've been absolutely everywhere, all around the world, all recording and, and stuff like that, and it's been great. It's been brilliant, and um, but I'm looking forward to to the new music coming out, and then for more to follow, obviously in two thousand. But you're still, like I say, right? the first cut of year. You went all out. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be good for you <clears> taking that couple of year break, revise, get your new strategies, Aye. become a, a stronger person, Aye, understand definitely. the industry, mm-hmm. stronger voice. Mm-hmm. It's the world still yours. It is, you know, like when, when you come off the show, that's what I'm saying. People see you every single They've watched you for 14 weeks. You still kept show. your name out there as Aye. well. You're still Aye. popular on social media. You're still everywhere gigging, every mm-hmm. time. Instagram, you're, Aye, you're doing something. everywhere. I know, I know. And if people don't follow you on Instagram and whatever, and no, Instagram, just social media in general, mm-hmm. they don't see you. Like, I'm out doing something every weekend and I'm, I'm always I'm always busy. Like, I can't remember, like, the last time I stopped. But that's a good thing, you know. But um, when, when, when you're busy, it's great, do you know what I mean? Because people see you at different events and different things, and if you've not got social media, then they'll be like, "Well, where is this? What has happened? Did he disappear? Is he back to his ninety-five job?" But that isn't the case. Mm-hmm. But people forget when you're on the live shows, you're on that for twelve weeks. They're seeing you. That's what I say. Newspapers, magazines, mm-hmm. interviews. They're seeing you all over the place. So as soon as you come at that show, you've got an APR behind you, an X factor behind mm-hmm. you. You've got to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. So you're going from high. You don't. There's only one the way. bubble bursts. Do you know what I mean? The bubble mm. bursts and you start to ju- graduate. Mm. That just happens. News changes every day as well. Do you know what I mean? That just happens because, like, how are you supposed to keep your profile that high? There's no mm. bigger show than X Factor. There's no bigger publicity. There's no bigger platform than X Factor. There's some platform for you, but it's, it's been in, in, and it, there's no many Scottish artists to know. The Cut Kelvins, I've met them a few times. They're brilliant. They're really nice. Aye, they're good. They've done well last year. I think they're got a single out next year. Um, who else? Michelle McManus. But Michelle like McManus. And she then, still does her, her thing, gigs. Um, Leon Jackson. I've never heard them for years. I know. But f- maybe folk will say that about me, do you know what I mean? Like, no, but you are still quite active. You're still quite but you, fresh. But you, you, you know that because you, you've got, you've uh-huh. got me in social media uh-huh. and you, you'll you look at that and go, God, he is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you know like mm. how busy I am. Do you know what I mean? But people, people that maybe know go to social media or whatever will be like, Oh, I wonder what's happened to that wee boy. Mm-hmm. Which is totally understandable because I would be the same if I was watching it and never heard it and I never went to events or never had social media. But you look at in the back of your head, you'd be like, I wonder what's mm-hmm. happened to them. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But James Arthur, that I know he took a cut of your break. I think he fell out with Simon Kill and he's he came did back die. stronger. He's he came did. back stronger. He um he's actually he's same again. He's a really really nice guy. The Scottish. Um, no, he's his English. Scottish or his mum Scottish. Uh, ah, his dad, his dad's Scottish, and <clears throat> I think I think he's. Mum's English, mm-hmm. but um, he's really nice. But he, I think he had a fault with him, and then he he came back. But he won the show. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when he came out the show, he was releasing all his own music, and he done it all the right way. Do you know what I mean? Because the label wanted him to do really, really, really well. Do you know what I mean? So, think they dress you up as well, <clears throat> what they want to do? How you should be stalk, dress you walk, up, talk, dress you up. When I was in the live shows, the only thing I when I was on the stage, right, what you see me wearing. The only thing I could pick to wear was my underwear. <laughs> I swear to God, they they picked me socks with a full styling team. I was like, are you joking? So they've not got a rail where you can just pick it. What you a want. rail? They've, they've got something the size of this room. <laughs> Clay, just clays. <laughs> swear to God, right? They put a shirt on me, right? And I, and I was like, just a plain white shirt. And I'm like, ah, what's this? I says, I don't like it. And then put on this other one, this plain white. I was like, all right, love it. Like the stylist guy is like, hey, how do you know like the first one? <laughs> I says to him, I don't know, I just don't, I said, I don't like the material. He's like, ah. and he was a bit annoyed. He's like, ah, that's give inch or whatever you call it. Uh-huh. I'm like, ah, well, what is it? And I googled it, it was like a three and a pound shirt. And I went, how it's that? He went, that's a top man number. <laughs> I was like, ah, I don't know the difference. Uh-huh. Honest, I swear to God, and I'm five foot nothing, do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But with the that can I bro? So they had me <laughs> for Friday. Aye, they had me <laughs> for f- for Saturday, for Friday and Saturday all day for like four hours at a time. Different outfits, taking photos and sending producers, like cutting things up and making it my size and everything. And I'm just like, I, w- I wish I could just walk into JD and just put a jacket on. <laughs> Pair of trainees. Do you know what I mean? Just go on and sing. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? So they made me wear everything: up socks, 
No, that's what I'm saying. No, thing I could wear is my underwear because that's the first thing I had a shirt in the morning, put the moment. Oh, that looked good. <laughs> I'll be part my outfit tonight. <laughs> Wonder if that'll match the, the colour scheme. Your shirt at 400 quid. Do you know what I mean? Does it, do you get vocal coaches in that as well? Ah, you do. When does that start? So obviously, it seems you get through the auditions. What's the waiting? As you said, 12 weeks. Mm hmm. See when you say you're in. As soon as the live shows, your, your vocal, your vocal stuff starts. Because people do get stronger. You did get stronger. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they they folk are they're really really good, really really good. The, it's the some experience. Coach. It's crazy. For, so for your new single coming out, your yeah. new single's out on Friday. Yeah. What's the date? The date of the day. The twenty. What's it coming out? <laughs> the twenty third of November. The twenty. And that's my birthday. and all. You better send me Happy a card. Happy birthday! I will send you a card. Twenty two. <laughs> Did I read? A fresh pair of boxers on it. <laughs> Marks and Spencer's <laughs> shit. What's the new single about? Um, it's actually it's about so the single's called Limelight, and it's it's no. I think people hear that and go, "Oh, who's talking about loving the limelight?" But that the songs that's complete opposite. It's not about that. Oh. It's actually about just life in general. That sometimes you'll not always get what you want, but there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you'll have like days. It. You, you, I think I you like actually, like it. you, you never be tearing like up it. after this interview. I like it. It. Listen, well, We're going to put the song on at the end of this podcast, by the way. Good. Um, I and it's just about believing in yourself and and you believing that you will get there. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I like that. So, oh, so you, so you, 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 where can it. people buy it? So it's going to be in everything, Spotify, iTunes, all that. So. I'm yeah. looking forward to it, it'll be great, do you know? And it's, Are you excited? Um, but I'm nervous at the same time, do you know? Mm -hmm. Because people have been waiting so long for the new music and for me, it's a song I performed at, at a festival in the summer there and where the stage was, the sun was shining on the stage and I never walk on the stage with sunglasses on mm -hmm. to think I was Hugh Hefner or something, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Stevie Wonder. <laughs> 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 I was like, right, I'll put sunglasses on. So I started singing a song at the end. Just I thought I'd perform it, not say much about it, and just see what the reaction is. And it's a song where I get didn't even get to the second verse, and I was bawling my eyes crying underneath my glasses. Was it? Hey? And it's just a song for me. It's like I can relate to so much, and that's why I want to put it out so much, mm -hmm. and just be like, I hope you enjoy it. Do you know? Because people can go, oh, I don't like it or whatever. And everybody. Everybody will, everybody will have, have their opinion, you know, but I just want to put it out there and just let people enjoy it and, and whatever, do you know what I mean? And you've done all this yourself, have you got new management? Well, no, I kind of just do it, do it myself, my mum helps me out now and again, um, and it's just all, all myself, you know. It's good, but you know, phone Louis people's... again. <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> Prank him. <laughs> so, the new song's out on Friday. Yeah. Nicky. I think you've been absolutely brilliant today, mate. Thanks for having me. Be very honest, man, and, and give people an insight. Actually, that, you know, you could life. you could go on it. You could go on about it for 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 hours. Do you know what I mean? Like people be like, well, what? Because people obviously just want to know about the show and mm. why, but know what happened after it. Do you know? But God, you need you'd be sitting here for a, a week if you if you were going about it so so long. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it just so much just happened that it's just like it would affect you. But like I say, you live and learn. And it's gave you the platform for Aye, this definitely. thing on Friday. Today mm -hmm. your own thing. And if it's your own songs, you're in your own material and you don't need to answer anybody. Do you know, and that, that was like another reason why I left the label, because I can go in a studio now and write with whoever I want and do whatever I want when I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, they don't dictate to me I'm my own gaffer. Do you know what I mean? Aye, aye, but I did feel like that. Mm -hmm. And and see now, like as I say, I can go into a studio, do my own thing. Um, did they feel genuine to you though, try to take you under a wing and say, look, this is the industry. Did they warn you? No, there's no warning signs because at the record label they're all for each other for the management. They're all they're on the ring group for the agents. They're on the ring group, so it's like they're all looking after each other. They're not. You're just to be middleman. That they're gonna make the a puppet, lot. You? The, they're the gonna the make one. a lot of money. But can also be sure it's been great. You know, um, you know yourself. Like, hmm. It's flat out. It's busy. It's great. It's amazing. But even like all the gigs and I do, I some of them are charity. Some of them are. That's what I'm saying, like, one minute you can go for playing a wedding to then, I was playing in the Hydro a few weeks ago. That's right, so do it, well done. Do you know what I mean? So it what just, was that for the, the colours classical aye, aye. aye. So, so that, so that, that, that's just where this job can take you. That's fucking unbelievable, selling out the Hydro. But it was, you, no, it wasn't my kid. No, I know, but you're still singing aye, it, was, it was good, it was good. It and was that good. obviously can promote you and it people does. keep your name out there. And it's something, like, it's something different from what I would usually do. 
But I was actually on at the very end and we actually did a tribute to Avicii and we done that song Wake Me Up and it went doing brilliant. Everybody loved it and it was just like you when you're when you're on a stage like that with all the people, you get your mojo back like that, do you know mm. what I mean? You're like this is this is this is this is what you want to be doing. Did that give you the fire back then? It, I never lost timing. the fire, but it was like sometimes you lose your purpose. Mm-hmm. You want why you're doing it. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, everybody wants to be there and wants to play the hydro of the night. That'd be great. Do you know what I mean? But sometimes it, that's your that's your thought. But sometimes it takes longer to get mm-hmm. there. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm going to get there, but I'd like. But you should be. But we, we need to try. Do you know need, what I mean? Exactly. You need to believe in yourself. But um, no, I, and see now, that's what I said earlier, I like to use my platform now to help out charities and, and help out whoever I can, do you know what I mean? I'm I'm always, you know, I even mm. watch, I say, I, say, I, say, I say to you, the boys when I walked in about the documentary, The Homeless, I, I messaged you after I watched it, I think it was about two o'clock in the morning, I was yeah, like, you've got to be in his bed. <laughs> and I, and I, just, I just I just say, I say, look, anything I can do to mm-hmm. help you, do you know what I mean? And we do, I do like, I do loads of different events, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if it's, Big or small, mm-hmm. I'm all, I'm always there to, to help. Good. To help that's people. how you're well liked, and that's where people do invite you to other events. How I, can people get involved with your charities? How can people um, um, the, get follow you on social media? Get everything out there. Aye, you you can put on my social media. Down social in the, media, aye. In the description, oh, or something. put it down in the description. Ah, there we go. We mean? plug <laughs> uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. But like mm. I say, your Facebook is following strong. You had them already over a million, nearly two. Aye, it's, it's powerful. I, I, Instagram's nearly a hundred ninety. Twitter's 300 and Facebook 250. Sure, <laughs> I mean, I can't even count to 200. <laughs> but if you've got a bell to a song and then that's only going to latch on, it's only hopefully, going to... Hopefully, you know, and hopefully people pick it up and... Are you going to get the support for the radio stations? And are they going See, to that's, an all, that's another thing. Like, I, I know all the people at the radio stations, but they don't make decisions who, who comes in and out. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? If that was the case, then they'd be taking acts on all the time, but... But they should I've, support the acts. Aye, they should, they should. And that's the thing, see, like, with all these big radio stations... Either they're, they're based up here, but they're all run by a big company down in London. London. Mm-hmm. It's hard oh. to get in there, do you know what I mean? But you just need some self belief, and if you actually start to believe in yourself, like for me, I'll, my family always believe mm-hmm. me. But if, if you start to believe in yourself, then you'll definitely get somewhere. Nicky, it's been an absolute pleasure for coming start. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Uh, all the best with new uh, new single. I'll Thanks be there. I can't promote it, mate. And you've been a great guest today, mate. Very Thanks honest, very mate. So thank you. Cheers, what oh, off? Bro. Yes, get it open. <laughs>
making a decision Kept strong by your ambition Who really knows how far we'll go I've been waiting so long And now the feelings alive How many years How many lies How many times do I keep holding on to the so-called life Reaching out when the sun goes down Gonna pack my case Hit that town Don't know where, don't know how But I'll keep it all together Living in limelight Oh, I keep giving in my own The bright lights they keep bringing me That's where I'll lay tonight But tomorrow towards the light Don't know where, don't know how But I'll keep it all together How many years How many lives how many times do I keep holding on to the so-called life? Reaching out when the sun goes down Gonna pack my case Hit that town, don't know where, don't know how But I'll keep it all together Living in limelight Oh Living in limelight And I just want to say a big thank you to our new sponsor, Collins Morgan. Collins Morgan have assisted thousands of Scottish residents with financial difficulty. So if you are struggling to keep up with the increase of cost of living, along with debt management, then message Collins Morgan on Facebook and they will give you free, friendly and regulated advice on the solutions that are available to you. Thank you.